We start the recording. Okay. All right. First and foremost, let's get through the little formality of can you say your uh, full name, uh, spell it for me, and then your title as well, please. Sure. Sarissa Montague, S A R I S S A M O N T A G U E. And I am a criminal defense attorney at Levine and Levine in Kalamazoo. All right, so the interview today is about the GRPD finally releasing the name of the officer involved in the shooting death of Patrick Leoya. Uh, first off, um, we're going to talk about uh, whether or not you believe that this was late coming um, and if this shows uh, transparency by the police or if it is actually um, an attempt at showing transparency, but not really because they uh, withheld the name for so long. So I think that that's a bit of a difficult question, um, unless you're directly involved in the investigation, such as the GRPD are, it is very difficult to know what is true transparency or what is an attempt at transparency. Um, the information was not out prior to today. It is out now. And so now it's time to move forward. All right. And uh, what do you think that this release means for any cases that might be going forward? Um, in terms of any cases as uh, it relates to the potential homicide? Yes, uh, civil and or criminal. Well, from a civil perspective, um, I'm a criminal defense attorney. So a civil attorney would probably need that information, but but also maybe not um, in order to move forward. But from a criminal defense perspective or from the criminal justice system perspective, I actually don't think that the release of the name matters directly um, in terms of criminal charges or potential criminal charges, regardless of whether or not the public knew the name of the officer involved, certainly the police investigating knew who the person was and, and probably the prosecutor's offices as well. So whether or not it's, I say prosecutor offices, whether or not it's just the Kent County prosecutor's office, I know there had been some discussion about the AG's office getting involved. So from their perspective, they knew the name from day one, and I don't believe that this makes any difference at all in terms of what they are doing what, as to whether or not there's going to be criminal charges issued. Okay, and then I'm not sure if you're uh, familiar with this exactly, but um, do you know what the average precedent is for the, this type of uh, release as far as the name goes? Is it usually just when the uh, investigation completes, or is there a specific timeline usually that, that follows up with this? I think that this is a really, it's an unusual situation. Thankfully, um, there are not many officer involved shootings like this that take place all of the time. So, um, you know, generally when there is a crime that is committed, nobody really learns about who's involved until charges are issued. Um, so that part of it, um, it, it's always different when it's a high, a high profile case. Um, and, and I don't think that there is a, specific statistic on how long does it take. Um, typically though, I, I, I have seen myself, it really doesn't happen until charges are issued at some point, but oftentimes people know who's involved. So do you really, um, I think the problem is that there's rumors that are flying regardless of whether or not it's officially released. Okay, and then do you think this sets a bad precedence for how long it was, uh, the name was withheld or? Um, do you think this is just perfectly fine how, how, it, how it ended up? I think it's very difficult to be able to say whether it's good or it's bad, whether it was how it should have been or how it shouldn't have been. The fact is that this is a, a very sensitive issue. Um, there are a lot of concerns to keep in mind from safety perspectives. And I think it's up to the people in charge to figure out what is the best route in order to um, you know, to keep people safe as things move forward. Okay, I uh, just before you, I spoke with uh, attorney Ben Johnson, uh, who was representing Patrick Lewis and his family. And he was basically saying that this sets a very bad precedence for both um, Grand Rapids Police Department, as well as police departments across the state. Uh, do you find that statement to be factual? Or do you believe that this is just a, a, the normal type of situation? I would be interested in hearing his, his reasoning for, um, you know, his, his determination about good precedent or bad precedent. Okay. Um, and then, uh, let's see what else. Oh, um, do you think, believe that putting this officer's name out there would pose any danger to him? And do you believe that that may sure. have been a reason uh, why GRPD withheld it for so long? I certainly think that it does pose danger to him, to his family. 
Um, people are very, very angry, understandably so. And anytime you have people who are upset about something, it, it obviously um, potentially could lead to danger for the people who are involved, for sure. All right. Um, and then also, do you, uh, do you believe that this release um, is beneficial for the family and their case moving forward, or do you think it doesn't have much of an impact? From a civil perspective or from, from a criminal perspective? Uh, so, as, I mean, I, I, I well, let's go with criminal first since you're a, a criminal lawyer, but sure. um, also if you could if you could comment on the civil one, if not, that's fine. From a criminal defense perspective, again, um, the release of the name, in my opinion, doesn't change anything in terms of the investigation that has taken place and has been taking place, my understanding, at least that's what they've said since, since the, this incident happened. So the release of the name uh, the prosecutor's offices or office, whichever it is that's involved, is going to move at the pace that they think is appropriate to move at for, you know, a criminal case. Uh, the, the release of the name, I don't see how that makes any difference in terms of moving forward with potential criminal charges if there are going to be any. Okay, and then um, one quick hypothetical about that. Do you believe, because you know the media is going to be digging up a lot of information on the yeah. officer. Um, do you believe that that information that is shared can influence any possible jurors' uh, points of views or maybe muddy the jury pool, make it harder to find uh, jurors sure. who are unrelated to the case? Or so in, the a, case? in a situation like this where you have a very, very high profile case, there's always going to be an issue um, whether or not a change of venue would be appropriate. And the more information that is available to the public, the more um, I think you really have to consider if you are able to find a fair and impartial jury pool. That is one of the cornerstones of our justice system is to have an fair and impartial jury. And that's going to be something that whoever uh, defends the officer, should there be criminal charges, because at this point that hasn't been determined yet, you know, that, that's still out there, but that, that's absolutely going to be something that um, is going to be taken into consideration and considered very, very heavily at that time. All right. And then uh, lastly, is there any other thoughts that you have on the release of the officer's name that you'd like to share? Any sort of insight on anything? Not really, only in that it doesn't actually, in my opinion, it doesn't change the, the criminal aspect of it really at all. All right. Well, thank you very much for making time with us You're today. Welcome. We really appreciate no it. No problem. You have a good uh, day. You too as well. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.